hey, let's talk Next.js 13 app router internationalization. Internationalization tends to be a pretty difficult problem to solve, but there's some really nice patterns in the app router that solve this really cleanly and really simply. And so I'd like to show you a few today. I'm going to be using the primitives here that are in Next.js. They probably shouldn't change, but if you're watching this in the distant future, there may be a more blessed solution that the Next.js core team has for you that comes a little bit more out of the box. But at the same time, this solution kind of uses low level stuff, the primitives that are in Next.js. So this I'd imagine wouldn't end up being an invalidated solution, but at the same time, there may be something that comes along in the future that is really quick to handle all of this right out of the box. But with that said, let's take a look at how I am solving this today. So you'll see I have a really small application here. I just have a home route and an about route, and you can see that both of these are in English. However, I can switch to Spanish here, and suddenly they're now in Spanish. They're not in the URL bar here. Things are nice and clean, but I can show different languages to different folks. If you've never seen this sensors, by the way, you can find this in this triple dot, more tools and sensors. And you can switch this location to some pre-selected ones or you can just set your own locale. So that's how you can test this out pretty quickly. Now to actually create this application, it really only takes three files with a little bit of sleight of hand magic in it. The first thing that we need is a dictionary that has our actual content in it. This can come from a CMS. I just dropped it here into the repository to keep things simple. And really, we're going to need this for any solution that we're going to be using to create internationalization. This really isn't Next.js specific, but we need some content. So here's our content. The next thing we'll do is we'll start to get into the nitty gritty of how this works in Next.js. So I have a page here. And this is effectively my home page. You can see here I have home header, home content, but you'll notice that it is nested in this lang route, right? It has this param that is in front of where my home page is. If I didn't have this, I would have a page.tsx here. And this is where the home page route of my application would normally live. But to establish the routing procedure for the internationalization that we're going to put in, we need to have this lang available to us in the URL so that we can know what to serve. So I am going to get rid of this home page because that is going to not be how we're going to be handling things. You can also know as I have this layout open that you're seeing params lang here too. This isn't nested into that lang folder there. It can be, but I'm not putting it there. The reason that I can get away with this is because all of my routes are underneath this lang parameter. You can see that when I close this up, I don't have any page.tsx that is accessible in my app router. So I know all of my application views are accessible underneath this lang parameter. So I'm always gonna have that available. This won't error out on me. Additionally, I'm protecting it a little bit with a default locale. This will just default to English if that isn't available. So I'm not gonna break anything here in my root layout if I do go outside of this lang parameter, but at the same time, just noting that if you happen to have noticed it. Okay, so I have a route where I have available this langs param, but you might have noticed, okay, Anthony, the, there's no slash en here or slash es. You're, you're toggling that using the locale in that sensor and I don't see it up here. How are you doing that? The magic of Next.js middleware. If you haven't seen Next.js middleware before, this is code that runs before the request is answered to by Next.js. So this will, as you can see here, get their locale. We're gonna take a look at headers. Maybe we can rewrite responses. We can reroute our users before they ever make it to these file-based routes that we have waiting for them. So jumping into this middleware, we can kind of take apart the pieces of code that I have here and we can take a look at what's going on to get these routes down to the locale that our user is in. So let's let's start picking this apart. It looks like first thing I'm doing is I'm saying the locales that I want my application to be able to handle. In my case, I kept it simple. I speak English y también un poco español. So I am handling those two locales. I'm gonna set a default locale of English as well. So first things first, we gotta find out the actual locale that somebody is requesting and that they want. 
This information comes on their request headers. In particular, it comes on the accept language header. Here, we're gonna go ahead and set it to something that's a little bit safer for our code to use. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and create our own headers object using those headers that we just set, and we're gonna pass it to Negotiator. This is an HTTP library, super lightweight, and what we're gonna end up using is the method languages. It returns an array of the preferred languages of our user. They're gonna be ordered by their preference, so we're gonna get the first one that they care about. The next thing that we're gonna use is a library from format.js, intel dash locale matcher up here. And what you end up passing to this is their requested locales, and then the available locales, the ones that you actually have prepared in your application, and a fallback default locale. So. Now we have the locale that we're going to end up using. We're gonna start with the preferred one from our user and we're gonna fall back to one that we know we have available. Now that we know how to get someone's locale, we can use it in our middleware. So our first line, we're gonna grab this locale off of their request. Next, we need this path name. We need to be able to send this user to the actual route in our application that they were trying to get to. If they were trying to get to home, this is just a slash. If they were trying to get to about, like we have in our application, we need to have this ready to go so that we can pass this to the URL that we're gonna create. So that's where we have path name. And then last, we're going to string together that locale and that path name so that we can create a new URL with it and we can send them to that new URL. So now we have that URL with the leading locale in it. And remember, this is where that lang parameter comes in. So this is where these two things match up. This locale becomes this lang, and that is where this lang ends up being accessible so that we can access our dictionary using the language of our choice. So with our new URL in hand, we're gonna go ahead and use it as a rewrite to our user. What a rewrite does, is, as this comment says, the incoming request was slash products, but we're going to respond with slash en slash products, slash es slash products, whatever locales you have available in your application. Now, notably, as we saw, these don't show in my browser bar. I'm still getting English here. I'm still getting slash about here when I switch this off. So this doesn't show up in the browser bar. This just happens under the hood in Next.js, completely seamless for our user. The last thing of note here is that you do want to set the configuration for this middleware. You want the matcher to only happen on the routes that you want them to happen on. Under the hood, Next.js has a lot of routes that it uses for prefetching, favicons as you're seeing here, API routes, underscore next. There's a lot going on underneath there. We don't want this middleware to run before those because that can mess up internally what happens with the application. So hopefully that paints a pretty clean picture as long as you have this locale prefixed onto the URLs that you rewrite to, and you have that available in your actual application routing, then you're gonna be good to go. So yeah, that's all it takes. Hopefully that seems pretty simple. Honestly, probably the most difficult part of this is having all of the translations available in your dictionary. But after you have those, the Next.js handling part is rather simple actually in the Next.js app router. So. If you saw my last video, this was probably eerily reminiscent using middleware to reroute folks to the content that you want. I'll go ahead and throw that up here just so you can see how I feature flag the app router. And if you want me to keep making YouTube videos, you know the drill, likes and subscribes and all that kind of thing. So I know that I'm doing a good job. And if not, go ahead and comment and let me know because I'm just starting this out and I'd love to help with more knowledge like this.